We are live. JT here. Welcome to The Huddle. The Huddle is where I sit down with successful people from the world of sport and coaching. It's to learn more about their journey to greatness. Why do I have these conversations? Because success always leaves clues. I just want to take a moment to thank you for joining me and my special guest today. Again, whether you're tuning in live as we stream into the Facebook community, whether you're listening to the replay on the podcast, whether you're watching the replay on YouTube, thank you so much for choosing to be here with me and my special guests. And I guarantee you that you will grab some valuable nuggets of wisdom that will help you thrive not only on the football field, but help you thrive in life. I've been really looking forward to my conversation with my uh, guest today, and I, and I find it very poetic. I, he, I reached out to him early in the summer, and we said, okay, let's connect, and here we are. We are approaching kind of the, these last conversations of the summer, and he was able to carve out some time for us today in the huddle. My guest in the huddle today is a Western Mustangs football alum. He is also the head coach of the Jacob Hessler Hawks in the KW. My guest in the huddle today is Coach Greg White. How are you today, Coach? Doing great, thanks, uh, JT. Appreciate the uh, intro and feel a little pressure. I gotta, I gotta leave some wisdom, do I? <laughs> well, you know what, Coach? Based on the conversations we've had, I have no doubt that you're gonna give lots of wisdom and you're also gonna bring a lot of smiles to people's faces. Just again, I've always loved your wit and just your ability to, to make me smile. So thank you, coach. Looking forward <laughs> to it, looking forward to it. Definitely. So coach, uh, I just want to take a moment just to send you some gratitude. I know that uh, today being the first day of, you know, sort of back to school mode, really just grateful that you were able to carve out some time to, to be here with us and to share your journey to greatness. So I just want to say thank you again, coach. You're welcome. Happy to be here. I think it's important to uh, to share and uh, learn from learn from others. So I actually am very honored to be asked, and I uh, got a great deal of respect for the program that you ran at Lucas. So I'm hoping that uh, I'm hoping I can help in a small way. Yeah, for sure. So, Coach, in the huddle, we always like to start off, you know, by having a little fun. You know, one thing I often mention to people is, hey, life is a game, and games are supposed to be fun. So I'm curious, what is an interesting fact? Some may call a quirk that you have that maybe not a lot of people know about you that you would feel comfortable sharing with the community. Um, I would say, well, I want to talk about fun for a second. You mentioned fun. I think it's, uh, I say it to the guys that practice all the time, hey, if we're not having fun out here, we shouldn't, we shouldn't be out here. So I'm, I'm big on that one. I think if I were to say like my students, um, I don't know if it's a quirk, but you know, as a kid in high school and I'm not embarrassed to say, but even through university, I probably didn't read one book. I uh, wasn't a big reader, but now I would say I am a avid reader, um, fiction, nonfiction, um, you know, try to mix it up sometimes reading to help my profession sometimes reading about football but other times just reading i just go to the new york times top 10 list and and pick something i just surprise myself how involved i can get uh, uh reading so i think that would surprise some uh quirks i don't know i think the older you get jt you like things uh a certain way yeah uh, so first day back at school today, uh, I had to make sure the weight room was, you know, set properly. So all the two and a halfs are where the two and a halfs go and all the fives are where the fives go. And so I think that kind of, that bothers me, but it's, it's gotta be in place now. Whereas before it, it wasn't such a big deal. Mm. <laughs> well, and, and I love it, right? Again, I love the simplicity to keep it simple, simple, you know, this idea that, Hey, all great leaders read right and it's great that you know you, you make that a habit and two I, I also love the idea of like the attention to detail right yeah. and and again it's 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 doing things in a certain way right and when things when those when those those small what may seem as small details are taken care of the big things take care of itself exactly yeah 
So I, I'm curious, again, you, you had a successful career first as an athlete and, and then as a coach. So I, I'm really curious, what has been the biggest takeaway, like life lesson that sport has provided you that you still find yourself consistently applying to your life today? A uh, great question. I think just a love of sport and love of competition. Um, you know, there was a transition there when I first started teaching in 92 here, I was still playing minor pro hockey and, and making the transition to, you know, it's not about me anymore. It's about the students and the student athletes. Um, you know, and I forget what your wording was, but the, the, I think my wife sometimes just shakes her head, but the love of the process of a weekly game plan. So let's say we are, we don't play Lucas in our regular season, but we're playing, we we're playing Lucas and we're prepping Lucas and doing all those things. Like I can get wrapped up in it quite easily and spend a lot of time. And it's, 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 it's not work. It's never been work. Um, so I think, I think the love of sport, um, the love of competition and, and then I guess maybe the love of preparation or wa not wanting to be out coached is, is still competitive. And I guess, you know, and, and we mentioned prior to getting on, I, I probably get that from Larry Haler and, and Greg Marshall, but yeah. wanting my guys to be as prepared as possible is a huge, is a huge deal for us. And, and I love that you share that coach and what I really got from you especially as you talked near the end, was this idea of, you know, there's that cliche, right? Like, you know, love, you know, fall in love with the process, trust the process. Yeah. But I, I'm a firm believer that the greatest leaders are ones that have this balance between being process driven, yeah. but goal oriented, right? Like it's building towards something greater. Yeah. And I love how you tied in this idea of, you know, that, that competition, right. That, that inner drive, that, that athlete, athlete mindset, right. Like that, those high performance athletes, that it's just, it's embedded in us. Mm -hmm. And I, and I love how you're talking about, you know, how integral that is. Yeah. So from, from your experience, is that sort of drive that, that drive to be great, is that something that some people just have is it something that you can be taught what has your your experience been like uh yeah it could be a couple of different things i think I mean, and when i said the joy of uh i was almost quote my wife but i said the joy of sport i almost mean too the joy of effort but um you know and we talked earlier prior to getting on and and, and a big i'm a big believer in um just plain and simple hard work and, and we talked about it bothers me today that, you know, some people say that today's students don't work hard. And I don't believe that. And I think I do believe that if you show them what the expectations are or you show them what hard work is, they will work hard. And, um, you know, that's that's been one of the biggest ingredients for success here. We've had a pretty good run. And uh, I, I, in the classroom, I like to think we work harder than anybody else. And on the field, I like to think we work harder than anybody else. And, and that can't just be someone has to show that. I mean, you can't just preach that and expect them to do it. So, you know, I've been a big I, I'd say for the last 10 years, I made it a priority to be the absolute first person out to practice. Uh, and then so that that needy that needy guy that's out first, you know, he and I can have a he and I can have a visit one on one and then and then. But then the trend starts that that everybody's out early. Um, so yeah, a big one, a big one for me. Um, I get joy out of it. Uh, I like staying busy, but hard work, I think, is it, it seems to go back to that. Yeah. Well, and I love that you're sharing, right? Like the importance of leading by example, right? Like how you said you prioritize being the first one out to practice, right? And and finding the joy, just, you know, even having a conversation, hey, you know, how's your yeah. day going, right? Like it's, exactly. it's, it's, so I'm curious, anyone that has been to Jacob Hessler, when, when we came down and, and played that exhibition game and you showed and you sort of toured our, our coaches around the facilities, I mean, uh, 
<laughs> I felt like a kid in a candy store. I remember just looking here and you were just showing us. It just seemed like, you know, I almost felt like, um, you know, Willy Wonka was touring me around the, the chocolate factory, right? You, you have all these, all these great tools and all that. So I, I'm curious, like you sort of built everything from, you know, the ground up. What has that process been like of, of really building this environment, um, not only in, on a football field, but like in terms of like support environment weights and, and just bringing yeah. the community in? Yeah, uh, it's just been tremendously rewarding. Uh, I'm glad you said community. We've had a ton of we've had a ton of support from the community. Um, and, and you got to I think where it comes from, JT, you know, as a kid, you're in the car with your family and maybe you're going down the road to Florida and you go by a U.S. high school or a U.S. college and you look at that. Why can't our high school or yeah, not a college, but why can't our high school look like that? So I did a presentation for Offset a few years back and I actually labeled that. Why can't a Canadian high school look like an American high school? And uh, it's not going to happen overnight, but I, I'm very, very proud of the fact that we, I say we, the phys ed staff, the community, we had one double gym. We, like we were the worst facility. We had one double gym, wasn't even a real true double gym. We were the only school to have one. So then we got two. Our football fields weren't playable because it was a gravel pit out there. So we got sod and we got irrigation, we got lights. Well, then it became the hub of Cambridge, which I wasn't planning on, but it sort of became the meeting spot. So then we got turf. Well, if you're going to get turf, you might as well get a track. So we were able to do the turf field and the track at the same time um, and host events like regional OFSA. So that's been huge. When, you know, we got lucky along the way when the second gym was added, we had like a lot of schools. We had, a you know, 5,000 square foot. Well, we got a huge space that was designated to be a mezzanine and health rooms where you could view the games, but they ran out of money and couldn't finish. So we made that a weight room and we've got a 5,000 square foot weight room. A lot of fundraising, a lot of asking for favors, a lot of work. But in the end, uh, very, very proud. I love, I love showing people the facility, love coming to work every day because it's just such a nice place to work. And what I'm really getting a sense from you is that, you know, this idea that great things do take time, right? Yeah. It, it wasn't yeah. just an overnight thing. It was, yeah. you know, it was a process. It was engaging a lot of people. And that was one thing that was very evident listening to you speak at, at the Ottawa Clinic was you were very quick to say, hey, this is about, you know, a team approach. And it's really embedded sort of in how you sort of lead the phys ed department there, you know, how the football programs run, how the community. Now, I'm curious, was that something that you've always sort of understood the importance of, or was there a particular coach or mentor that really taught you the importance of, of building community and, and engaging community? Um, well, I mentioned his name, uh, two things I want to say before I forget, because as I get older, I forget things. I think it's very, very important to surround yourself with great people. And uh, you mentioned the phys ed staff here, and they've been tremendously supportive, and they are great people, and it's, and it's fun to work with. So that, you know, having that team approach isn't the same at every high school. There's a, a lot of times there's clashing or whatnot, but we all have the same vision. We're all on the same page. You know, the fundraising and, and, and that vision, honestly, um, we talked about the Western lineage, but Greg Marshall's just had a huge, you know, he's a mentor for me. I just, I think the world of him. Um, but when I first started here in 92, I remember taking players, football players from here in the car, drive them to London in the evening for a camp. And then that camp was a fundraiser for something to do with Western football, but it was hidden. It was fun. And then guys like Bill Lindsay and other, um, you could, these guys in St. Thomas were running bingos and they were using the money to buy hammer strength equipment. So I, I, when I became the department head, we got a bingo license and we started buying hammer strength equipment. Like it wasn't rocket science, but yeah, that's where I got the idea from. And then as I say, we, we got lucky in terms of being able to partner with community. Like we have great partnership with the city of Cambridge. And then we have great partnerships with Cambridge minor football and great partnerships with Cambridge minor basketball and great partnerships with Cambridge minor volleyball. And I just, pull my hair out when I hear other, uh, you know, athletic directors 
complaining about the club basketball or the club volleyball. Like you guys got to split resources and get on the same page and you guys got to help each other. And that's been a big part of the, uh, you know, big part of the success here. Even I like to throw a shout out to the, the city of Cambridge, the, the crew that takes care of our field and track. I mean, they take great pride in the facility. I give them a, you know, give them a call and, and we will get a big track meet. Well, then all the garbage, can, like the guys just take great care of it. And that's kind of the, you know, the pride in the community and Cambridge minor football, the Lions, it's a big meeting place. They've made the facility so much better. So that's been part of it. But I would say it started with, you know, guys like Greg Marshall and Bill Lindsay and seeing what they did. And, and what I really got from you there was, again, you know, this idea that great leaders, you know, it's, it's so easy to focus on, you know, the danger or why it can't, why it can't work, but yeah. really it just, it's finding that one opportunity and just, yeah. you know, observing how other people are doing it, yeah. you know, taking that idea and just running it with it yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a big guy on why it can't work, JT. I don't, <laughs> I'm not, uh, I remember in the early nineties and I shared that at the Ottawa clinic, Lou Holtz, he was a tremendous motivator. <clears throat> but one of the things that really sticks with me, and I tried to say that to the high school coaches that wanted scheme, it, it, it's, it's, those, those things aren't all about scheme. I mean, you can pick up some good stuff, but Lou Holtz said, if you got a problem, you got two things you can do. You can live with it or you can fix it. And we had a big problem here. We were the laughing stock when it came to athletics, and we were the laughing stock when it came to facilities. So, if you want to look in the newspaper, well, nobody looks in the newspaper anymore, but if you want to look in the newspaper and see your, see your school at the bottom of the standings all across the sports, then I guess you're going to live with it. But if, if you don't want to see that and you want to, I mean, look at, a, look at a city that hosts the Olympics, how those programs improve after they host the Olympics. Um, you know, I'm, another mentor of mine, Jeff Watson, he's helped create this weight room, build this weight room. And, you know, we've given our students a world-class weight room in which to train and get better. I mean, how can they not get better? Yeah. So. You know, and it's interesting how, you know, you're mentioning earlier this, this, this idea of, you know, it, it is easy, right? Sometimes to let the ego take over and go, oh, it's someone else's fault. But really, when you, when you really form the habit of going, we go, right? And, and we can go further together. Yeah. That's where yeah. it, it just, things amplify right and you're just able to achieve more like the true definition of a team together everyone achieves more yeah for sure i remember one year that was our our t-shirts we had that on the back of the t-shirts that that one you just said together everyone achieves more for sure okay so you know one thing that you know has i i've really loved again you know when we first met um at that exhibition game was I loved how that sense of community really got on. And, and here's where I did observe it. In that exhibition game, right, I, I noticed how quickly that you cleared the bench, right? Like you let everyone come on and, and, and play. So how integral has that been in order to give, to let everyone have such a great experience there at Jacob Hessler? Like how, how, has that amplified the results of the program? Uh, well, I appreciate you saying that and recognizing that. Um, it's really helped. I mean, early, Hesper's a small community and, uh, you know, football wasn't big here again because of facility and, it, and, and we were late to the game. Like we were a newer, a newer school, previously had been a vocational school. So getting into football, we were in dead last place. Uh, I'll get to your, I'll, I'll try and answer that as specific as I can. But I remember JT having rosters of 20, 22, which really meant 17 or 18, because you're always missing a bunch. And by necessity, you had to have eight or nine guys and some days 10 or 12 guys go two ways. And then we started to get a little better and the roster would hover between 24 and 26. And I had to take some of the blame because at that point, I was using too many guys two ways. And then when we, we almost, again, in our region, junior football has a rule. And I, I really hope, we, they still haven't announced whether we're going to have football or not, but I think junior football is just a great introduction to high school. 
you know, you got 50 guys out for the team at a school like this, and then other schools you might have 28. <clears throat> but there's a rule that no player can play two ways, or you can identify two players. So, you know, all about development, and it's great. We made, uh, you know, we've been on a pretty good run here, and we made a conscious effort to not two-way a single player during Wixa. And our roster probably went from 26, 28 to consistently 46, 48. I think some years we might have, yeah, somewhere in that range. And I think, uh, but it can't just be given, JT. It can't just, okay, we got these 12 spots on all, we got these 12 spots. It is still, but then guys realize, you know, and obviously we've had success, so that's helped with numbers. But I think, um, I think it's it's, and it's. I think it's the way it should be. I think you should have 24 different starters, uh, and then obviously it's tough when you go to special teams. And yeah, we might have a backup that's at a starter at a different position, or a backup that's on defense that's a backup on offense. But yeah, we really try to have 24 different starters for even for their own identity, for sure. And it's really interesting that you you talk about that because I know near the end of my career. Again, maybe it was just from my own experience, you know, you, you think that there's something about, you know, just <laughs> the two-way warriors, right? And, and doing that, but then you start to realize that that comes at a cost, right? Yep. And But then there's something amazing where when you give opportunities for, for, for all your team members to have some sort of role, yep. it just, there's something about the team, right? Like it, it yep. creates a shift. And I, and I know some of the best teams that I've ever, you know, been blessed to coach where yep. ones where, you know, it's when you have buy-in from even the guys that are quote unquote, at the end of the bench, because, you know, you're at least giving them an opportunity to yep. be in some sort of role. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't, I, I think it's very discreet. Like it, to me, if there's a, if there's this much different in talent to have, to have a one guy that it is better to two way, over developing a guy for a season to me just doesn't make sense for the program. And you know what it's like. There's guys that work. There's guys that play hockey. Guys that get sick. Whatever. You're gonna you're gonna get injuries late in the season, and then you're asking a guy to fill in, and he hasn't taken any reps. So we would rather go the other way. Start 24, and then if we got a you know if we got a, a stud like JT that are running back and a DB or something like that, that he's got to go two ways. And once we get out of Wix there, you know, then we are in a, in a need in a pinch, but yeah. we really, really try to have 24 starters. Mm. I love that. So I'm curious, you know, you're sort of coming to the quote unquote end of your, your teaching career, right? And again, you, you've created an amazing level of success. You, you know, you've had the pleasure of, of coaching your son too. You know, what, you know, as you reflect back on, and, you know, maybe I'm throwing you on the spot here, you know, when you think back, is, is there really, you know, like a memory or experience that really jumps out to you as, you know, that was, that was special. And it's kind of like the one where, you know, you, you really go back to that's what, that's what this is about. Yeah. Uh, there's several, uh, I don't know which coach said it probably a lot. I think in a lot of ways, sadly, you're, like just specific to football, you, you do remember some of the tough losses more than you more than you remember. Um, but I think, like, I never dreamt that it would have. Honestly, JT, um, one of the toughest toughest things on this journey in 2015, I lost my best friend for life, uh, Marquette. He um, he succumbed to uh, lung cancer and. Uh, there was times when we would say to each other, do you think we're ever going to win a championship? Like we would always find a way to lose to, you know, in Cambridge, when you go to a Kitchener Waterloo school, we would have a lead against a powerhouse like Blue Vail, which would be the equivalent of CCH or whatever. And then we'd find a, find a way to turn the ball over or we'd have the lead against WCI. And we just had these heartbreaking losses. And honestly, I wasn't sure if we'd ever win a championship. And then to go on a run where you you know you go to nine wicks of championships and you win set you know you've won seven of the last seven. Uh, so in answer to your question, I, I guess I've learned a lot and and yeah you, the people and and what I would do for those 
for those guys that, that played football and, and feel very fortunate to be in touch with a ton of them via text and, you know, to electricians and doctors and guys going to schools and guys starting their own business. Uh, just, it's, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't, I remember my grade 13 physics teacher asking, what are you guys going to do when you grow up or what are you going to do? And I, I, I know for a fact, I said, I think it'd be pretty cool to teach phys ed and coach high school football. And, you know, I've lived it. So it's been, it's been huge. And I also, you mentioned you bounced, not that you bounced, but you taught and coached at a few different schools. Mm -hmm. I think there's definitely positives to that, but mm -hmm. I love the fact that I started at Jacob Hesper 30 years ago and who knows, I might shut it down this year. I might keep going, but it's been, it's been one school and it's been a, it's been a ton mm -hmm. of fun. And, and what I really gathered from you there is again, the importance of, you know, you win with people, right? And, you know, yeah. so sort of tagging off that Woody Hayes book, right? Is just, that's what it's about, right? Like when that final whistle goes, it's those the relationships you build, right? Where you, where you see, you know, some of these young people, you know, as they become parents, as they go into their professional career, as they have kids, right? And, and they come back and you just realize, yeah. wow, like I, I played a small part in that, in that, in that journey. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a huge part. And, you know, um, well, even even one of our guys here that uh, uh, was coaching that day when you came, Anthony Magicomo. I mean, he pl he played here at Jacob Hesper, went on to have a great great career at Laurier. Was a stand up defensive player of the year, won a great cup, Montreal, and you know, he's coaching here. And what a what a what a better guy to coach with. And there's 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 tons of guys like that, and and maybe guys that didn't go on in football, but have had, you know. They still talk high school football. Yeah. It's it's important to them, and that's why I'm so. Uh, hopeful that, you know, that, that it can happen this year, but it's a big thing, mm -hmm. big deal for them. Yeah. Um, something that you mentioned, right. Where, you know, I love the fact that you said that, you know, in any situation, right. You can always take something you did well, something you can learn, right. Sort of pairing off that Nelson Mandela quote, I never lose. I either win or I learn. And you know, I, I was reading an article in, in preparation talking about your your awesome bowl game where you played Lauren Park and how you really use that as a catalyst to to learn and move the program forward. Yeah. So so I'm I'm curious, like, what was the big takeaway from that? Where initially it felt like you know uh, a loss, but you really move forward from that experience. Uh, I think. And again, it's it's those baby steps like um, JT. It took us. We got to the Wixa Championship twice before we won it, and then we got to Quasa twice before we won it, and then we went to Opsa twice before we won it. And I think sometimes you look at schools like CCH, like Lauren Park, uh, AMI. You know the schools I'm talking about. You know that just. Are, you want to be there, but you know you're not quite there yet. And we lost. Uh, I remember the the game against Lauren Park, and uh, we lost a very dynamic player uh, to an ankle injury just before the first half. Seth Robertson. He's with Western right now. He went to he went to Loomis at prep school. Uh, so we lost him in grade eleven. Um, but I think in answer, like so after that game, and I, that and when you got a player like that that the offense revolves around. And now he's out of the equation and you're down. You know, we went, it woke me up as to what we could do. Like we relied on other guys to make some plays. We ran the ball very well and we got it. We got in a position Well, we scored a touchdown to, to like as a cushion that's called back on a hold. And then they drive the length of the field and, and score with, I don't know, seconds on the clock. So I think knowing that you could hang like, I wish I could have played that one over again. And that's when I say, that's one of them. When I say you remember the losses more than the wins, that's definitely one. Um, but Hey, that's Lauren park. And we just, we feel we beat them, but you know, at the end of the game, we didn't beat them or, you know, in, 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 in the great quote that you just mentioned, we certainly learned. And I think we had a ton of guys from that team come back and say, that's never, that's not happening again. Like, so we had a motivated team. We had a veteran heavy team. And then we finally got it done the next year. But yeah, you draw on that. You go back to it and say, you know, you gotta, you gotta, 
stomp it and get it right to the end. So that was tough. That was tough. Well, and I love, you know, what you were talking about there. And it was almost like that you needed to go through that to, to really just, you know, plant that seed of belief that, hey, we can hang, right, yeah. with the big programs. Yeah. And that once that seed got planted, it yeah. almost fueled the offseason. It fueled what happened going forward because that it sort of just opened the door, right, where the players, the coaches, they believed. Yeah. And I, I think the I think the other's true. Like in our in our um, county in Wixa, you know, we we haven't lost a game in, since 2011 in the regular season. And there's been games we should have lost. And I think our opponent. I think part of that is now uh, our guys don't expect to lose. And part of it is our opponent should have put us away, and they didn't. And and it was it was kind of us in the reverse of, of Lauren Parker playing, playing a school like that. I think sometimes it takes a while to, to learn how to win and the expectations, but that was definitely part of the process. Yeah. Learning how to win. Um, I always, I was a huge, huge Wayne Gretzky fan and Edmonton Oilers fan back in the eighties. And one of the things in sport that always sticks with me, JT is, uh, you know, Gretz talked about when they lost to the Islanders, the last time, like when the Islanders won their fourth, um, he was pissed off because he had to leave the building and he had to go by the Islanders dressing room. Like things were a lot different back then, a lot simpler. And he had to go by the, we all good? Had to go by the Islanders dressing room and he didn't want to see them, you know, drinking champagne and partying. And he just didn't want to see that. But the big eye opener to her was, uh, to him was, you know, Trache had an ice, like the guys were wounded. The guys were, they could barely, they could barely celebrate. They were, they were, you know, and they realized then what it took to win. And that's part of the learning process too. And so getting there and not quite getting it done and then having that terrible bus ride home, all those things. Uh, but I, you know, Gretzky in his book talking about that, that's a huge, and there's a, you got to pay a price and a big sacrifice to get there. Well, that, and, and again, it's interesting. I love that you, you know, you brought up, obviously you connected to your passion of hockey and, you know, he, he had to see like, this is the price, like, am I willing to pay that price, right? To go through that amount of pain, yeah. you know, and, and it's interesting to see how that parlayed into, you know, one of the greatest hockey dynasties ever. Yeah. And, and I even think of like Michael Jordan, right. And obviously with the last dance, that sort of, that whole journey got glorified, but you know, he needed to get beat up by those bad boy Pistons in yeah. order to you yeah. know, get strong, right? So so I love how it's a great reminder that the greats mm -hmm. use those quote-unquote losses as fuel to drive them and show them, exactly. you know, this yeah. is what needs to be done. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. Yeah. okay. So I, I'm curious, Coach, you know, we're, we're coming out of an interesting time, right? The, the last year and a half has well, just maybe been a very unique time in hi human history. So I know you were talking about, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty um, right now as we get up and forward, you know, things things do look good. But I'm curious, like, if, you know, football's a go this season, you know, where do you even begin? Like, you know, how, how do you how do you even start to prepare where you have athletes, you know, coaches that maybe have been off the field for, you know, close to two seasons? Like, what what what's the first thing that you think needs to be addressed in order to prepare athletes and coaches um yeah i think if you don't address it you're going to have problems i know the cfl this year uh in training camp they had a lot of soft tissue injuries achilles tendons hamstrings guys getting hurt um we have a pretty good idea what our guys have been doing and, and you know we've reached out and you can share a program but whether that's getting done i think i think um which is hard for coaches by nature because you want to get this in and, and you want to, you know, you look at last year's practice scripts and this is where we're at. And that's, that's generally what I would do on day one. Well, this is what we did on day one, the last 15 years, or, you know, you have the practice plan saved. I think the biggest thing you got to do is start slow. Um, slow with, um, we don't do a lot of conditioning in practice. We, we try to run up tempo, no huddle. So we, we don't feel we need to build in, uh conditioning but i think um taking breaks and giving it to them in chunks and maybe taking a five minute you know we're gonna run some 
some temple 40s. Just, just we're not sprint. We're just going to loosen up. Or may, you're going to have to build in. And, you know, there hasn't been a lot of contact. So um, we were we were a big proponent. Actually, um, Anthony Magicomo was part of the, the driving force. But we, we, we started each practice with safe contact. So, and it's not live contact, but safe contact. So I think, you know, being aware that there's probably going to be more injuries just because some of our guys have been more sedentary than they would have normally been. I, I just think number one, JT, being aware of it. So now you're aware of it. And, you know, a great coach. Um, so great. I forget his name right now. Give me a second. Uh, help me out. The, the quarterback guru from Montreal who's in San Fran. Uh, anyways, he would say you build practice based on your drills, based on last week's game. So being aware that our guys are less fit, haven't been in contact, I don't think you can go two and a half hour practice and end it with gassers. Like, I don't think that's smart. And I think you're asking for trouble. Um, and again, if you'd asked me, and I, and I don't think it's important to be in full equipment. I think it's fine for these guys in the heat to be in uppers with shorts on. I don't think that's soft. I think we can go... You know, I think they need a taste of it. I think there's days, and and when we say we're going full equipment, and a guy comes out in shorts, well, then that's a problem. That's you know, that's part of your discipline. And you know, Alabama, everybody's everybody's dressed the same. Um, but I think the big thing would be being aware of it. It's it's not it's not soft to not have a 1950s mentality and get guys hurt because of conditioning, because of contact, they're not ready for. So I think that's the mm-hmm. biggest thing is just being aware of it. Yeah. No, I love it. And I was just thinking too, as you were saying, Mark Trustman. Mark Trustman, thank you. That's 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 he is a he is a um, a very thoughtful guy. Uh, I said that in my presentation. Uh, I've I've seen him present twice, and the mm-hmm. fact that uh, Magic played with him in Montreal, I was able to meet him at Michigan. Mm-hmm. Just a just a great great guy. Obviously, loved what he had to say about developing the quarterback, but just. You know when you can tell with certain people, you can just tell what a quality person. And uh, that's where I got that. Like, you can get a drill from a book, but we can make drills up. We can reenact that that, that moment in the game that I want to teach. You had you had leverage on a guy at the sideline, and you missed. But we should be able to make up a drill based on leverage at the sideline. And I'm not even a defensive guy, but we can make a drill up like that. Mm-hmm. Or – you know, we're running zone read on our offense. Our quarterback's getting a Tom mesh every night. Whether I got to take our manager or somebody, you still have to have somebody play the, you know, the quick end and and get them to read and react, not just to a ghost, but to a body. So mm-hmm. I think that's what Tristan would say. And I think, I think football coaches would be uh, ill-advised to, to start out as if nothing had happened. Mm-hmm. I think you gotta you gotta modify, and I think you gotta downgrade the intensity a bit. Mm-hmm. Listen to your players. Yeah, and I love that, right? Like I, I got a couple of things from you as you were sharing. One, the importance of everything should have a purpose, right? Don't just do things just to do things. Everything should have, be serving a greater purpose. Yeah. But then two, you know, just the evidence we've seen, right? We've seen the evidence in professional sports, right? We've seen right. that even pro athletes that are the most ambitious, the most driven. You know that we've seen the evidence in the professional leagues not just football but we've seen it in the Bundesliga and in, in, in Europe and soccer and we've seen all yeah. that so yeah. you know it, it, yeah I love this starts you know sort of start slow mm-hmm. so uh, sort of an idea that came up there I, I love how you talked about you know checking in with your players and you know this last I would say summer especially with everything that's happened with the Olympics right with Simone Biles with uh, Naomi Osaka, you know, the, this whole conversation around mental performance has has definitely become more at the forefront. So I'm curious for you, is this something that you feel needs to be at the top of mind as we transition back? Like, do you think that there needs to be more of an emphasis on, you know, the social emotional development of athletes coming back off, you know, a year and a half layoff? Yeah, I'm, I'm curious, What 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 is your you know, a, opinion on, on that. 1000%. Is that strong enough? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I just was making some notes. We're going to meet as a tom- uh, department tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, 
we've got a great principal here. I got a lot of respect for her. And, and the number one thing she said today in our virtual staff meeting was, you know, making connections. Uh, I know you had a coach on last week who I think very highly of Tom Manette. He shared at uh, the Ottawa clinic things they do at practice at the end of practice and how they connect with players. But yes, a hundred percent JT. Um, you know, one of the things like there's been, I mean, it's been bad. It's been rough. Let's be honest, but there's been a lot of good come out of this. Like you and I would have never had this conversation five years ago. So that's cool. Um, teaching virtually and, and knowing my guys were, you know, hurting, I don't like to say, okay, fellas, we're going to talk about mental health. Where I like to build it in, in in the phys ed is we did a, we ended each day and you've used the word several times, gratitude. So we ended each day with either breathing or meditation. And I really wanted to check in if they were sleeping okay. So that was a big deal. And and I think it, 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 uh, I, I mean, I, I need to be better at asking, uh, you know, so for kind of an evaluation at the end of the course, but I do it verbally and guys, enjoy, they enjoyed that. And, and some of the characters you think wouldn't enjoy it. And so much to the point where if something happens, like you had a tornado drill or something and you couldn't, you couldn't meditate to finish the day. Guys are like, wait, we, we're not, we're not meditating today. Like or we're not breathing today. So yeah, like if you're not dialed into um, and I think, you know, I think this thing here has contributed uh, a lot of a lot of those issues. Uh, I feel very, very fortunate that um, you know I'm not. I'm, I'm generally not sad, and I'm not. I'm not I, I haven't had to deal with that, but I certainly respect that it is not a weakness. That it's that it's a sickness, and um, I think one thousand percent we gotta. And, it, and it's 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 not that I'm old JT because I'm not old but you know maybe my strength isn't um you know camp games or icebreakers or that type of thing day one in the weight room I sort of like to get I sort of like to get rolling just like I would football practice but as you're going you can have those moments one-on-one that you know okay I'm not coming up with a groovy game of tag and whatever and, and that's fine if that's your strength and I think you should do that but I've tr- really, really try hard to check in with with all of them, whether it's students or players, each day for sure. Yeah, and it just you have you have to be aware. I mean, man, some of the athletes, even you know, in pro, you know, you're 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 shocked to hear, you know, these athletes are making they've got the life that we wanted, and they're making millions of dollars, and you know. They're not having happy endings, so it's 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 definitely needs to be addressed. And I think uh, you know I'm a big fan of the U.S. Open. Uh, I say to my kids that you know maybe next year I won't be at school, I might be at the U.S. Open. But I think you know, listen to Osaki. She, what a great role model and uh, Simone Biles, like awesome, awesome. I mean, we we're we were glued to the Olympics this summer and just you know had so much enjoyment of watching her athletically, but just seeing her grow as a person is huge too. Mm. And, you know, coach, what I really got from you was I I just love how growth minded you are. Right. And again, you know, just that ability to to find those opportunities to introduce meditation. Right. Some 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 mindful breathing. Right. And just, you know, will will they be buying 100 percent of the time? No. But at least if you're giving them the opportunity and creating that space, you know, they could take from it what they will. and, and, And you're showing through your actions that it is a priority. Right. So, so I just really want to celebrate that coach that, you know, kudos to you for seeing the value in that and prioritizing that. Yeah. Okay. So coach, I have one last question um, before we end here today. And, and I'm curious, you know, as I was mentioning, you know, we've, we're coming out of a very interesting time, right? Very unique time in human history. Uh, But I think what it's reminded us that is that challenges, obstacles, adversity are part of the game of life. It's not that we want to expect them, but we understand that it is a part of the game of life. Yeah. So, so I'm curious from you, what is one piece of advice that you would offer someone that maybe is going through a challenging time, you know, an action that they could take that will help them create some positive momentum and help get them back on their journey to greatness. 
Um, well, I remember when this first started and we were all scared, 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 scared. You know, we were the heck scared out of us. And the first virtual meeting uh, I had, I believe was with uh, the phys ed department. And I, I said to you earlier how much I think of them and, uh, you know, the importance of surrounding yourself with good people. And and honestly, there was there was people that, you know, but this is probably like, uh, what was it, Friday, March 13th when it hit. So this might have been 10 days after, somewhere in there, you know, after the March break, something like that. And, you know, there's people that broke down in that meeting. It, it was tough. We were scared. We didn't know what to expect. We didn't know what was happening. And, and I just said, <clears throat> uh, I said, guys, figure it out what it is you like to do and do it. And you might be doing it a fair bit, you know, and I shared what I like to do. I said, you know, I like, I like structure. So my wife and I, we work out, we're not to get, we get a workout in, um, you know, maybe some reading. And then at that point we were, we were not teaching online. We were, we were, we were feeding our students information, um, which we got much better at quickly. Uh, being outside in nature for me was a big one. Very, very fortunate. I live on a 46 acre property and was able to go for a walk every day in the bush. Just that, that time outside, uh, was huge. Um, and then I thought to myself, you know, and and I think we've seen it. We've seen a lot of people, um, lose a lot of weight and, and get really healthy. And we've seen a lot of people, unfortunately drink too much and, and their diet and, and, and we don't judge. And that that's, that's happened because of COVID. We don't know what the stresses are in their life, but I think making a decision to, to not go down that path, uh, has, has really, really helped with my own headspace. So I think my advice would be figure it out. Cause sometimes it surprises you what it is that you like to do, or you thought you like to do this, but you know, um, and I've said to our group several times because we have, uh, younger teachers with young families, I've told them several times that you've got this way worse than, you know, than, than my wife and I have because, you know, dealing with a young family has been a much, much bigger change. And then I think the second piece of advice, you know, we got an election happening right now. We got talk about a passport in the province. We got a lot of things happening. And I think one of the things that's the complaining or the, like, I just don't find anything positive or useful in, they got it wrong. No, they got it wrong. Like there's a, so much of a divide right now. Um, and, and when, and you know, when this happened back in March with black life matter and, and all the, there was so many things to be polarized. So I guess my other advice, is it's, it's not, an, it's not healthy to have negative energy and complain. If you're going to complain, like provide us some solutions. Like I wish I knew the answer for us to get out of this. And I don't, so I'm not going to complain. I'm just going to start, you know, stay positive and continue to do things that I get enjoyment from. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know, I, I love it. Yeah. Right, coach. And, and it, it, again, it's that keep it simple, simple. And, and what I really heard from you was the importance of like creating a culture of joy in your life, right? Like, and when I speak joy, it's like the things that make you smile, right? Where you don't have to think about it. It's just, just love doing them. Yeah. And, and I just love how, it was so unique to everyone. And when you really get at the core of what that is for you, yeah. it, it's, it's really the best, like quote unquote medicine. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So coach, I, I'm curious, how can people like, is, is Jacob Hessler on social media? Like, are you guys any of that? So they can sort of, you know, follow kind of what's going on. I, uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm a little bit old school that way, I guess. Okay. I'm not on social media. I'm not on Facebook. Okay. I'm not on Instagram, any of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, but we are, I think uh, if you text me or email you, I'll send you the Jacob Hespler. I think we have a Jacob Hespler Instagram account. Okay. Uh, okay. The football team doesn't have anything. And you know, uh, it was a great presentation at the Ottawa Clinic on social media. I just, yeah. uh, uh Probably a generational thing. I don't know, James. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, Coach. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I get it. Okay. But I'll, I'll share with you. I mean, we do. I mean, one of the things that I was really, really uh, 
proud of what we did during this um, that I know was on social media. We ran a, for years, we, and that was another fundraiser, but for years we ran what was called a power fit day here in the spring. We tried to show off the facility and we bring athletes in and have great coaches around, put them through their paces. Well, we couldn't do that last year, so we did it virtually, which I thought was crazy when the guy suggested it, but uh, Tom Payne at, in Dundas suggested it. But we, uh, we ended up getting over 400 high schools from seven different countries. We had another guy by the name of JT, check him out out of California that led, I think we had seven or eight coaches lead, you know, sort of 30 minute presentations. He's a body weight guy. So that was, that was a little bit of social media for us, but that was, that was, that was really, really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, no, that sounds like, again, I love the innovation. I love the growth and innovation coach. <laughs> Hey, Coach, I, I really wanted to take a moment. I, I wanted to take a moment just to acknowledge you, right? I, I want to acknowledge you for the man you are, right? The husband you are, the great dad, the teacher, the coach, the mentor, the great leader, but most importantly, the amazing human being you are. Coach, you know, in the, in the time we've really, you know, met and gotten to know each other a little bit, I, I, I really love how you approach life, right? Like, like just your sense of, you know, building a sense of community, right? The ability to make others smile. It, you know, it's such a wonderful trait, Coach, and, and it's brought so much joy to my life. So I just really wanted to take a moment to acknowledge you for doing that. Thank you very much. It means a lot to me, JT. And I would, you know, I would say that it was by design certain teams that we play, like in the exhibition. So like, you know, you and Sammy, you, you, I say it a lot. You surround yourself with good people. You know, and, and you're good people, and it's 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 a joy uh, it's it's a joy to be around good people. But I really appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Hey, folks. So here is my suggestion to you. Coach dropped so many valuable nuggets of wisdom that will allow you to thrive not only on the football field, on the basketball court, whatever the, your sport is, but most importantly in the game of life. But what I want to remind you is knowledge is potential power. It's the consistent and focused application of that knowledge that actually creates great results. So what I want you to do is take one of it and go do the work. And I look forward to chat with you next time in the huddle. Have a great day, everyone.